Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's edition of For the Now Space News, the often imitated but never duplicated Syntax News program for the week ending November 12th, 2022. We have some choice headlines from the week to get you caught up on uh, what we're told are the current events on Earth, as well as a couple memes to tickle your funny bone, and then a cognitive conjecture featuring uh, the content gift that keeps on giving, the nefarious individual known as Chief. So if you know, you know. Let's, uh, without further ado, move on to the headlines. First headline comes from our conspiratorial friends at SOT.net, the world for people who link, uh, and it says, Newsreel, what's the real reason for West Russia war over, they say it's for protecting from invasion, and that even if gets what he wants from there, standing up for it is just the right thing to do. Obviously, this reason is not credible, coming as it does from people who destroyed Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, and Syria. There are always real reasons, usually big money ones, behind the propaganda narratives. And uh, for once, I do agree with the fiction babble put on the page here. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of language modification going on here. You can look at the... Uh, Syntax key at the top of your page here or behind me on the wall and find out why I'm banking the values I'm banking in this headline. For example, we have this title, News Real, which would be considered a pronoun. And then what's is a pronoun. The is an adverb modifying real into an adjective. Reason is a pronoun for is an ad, as a adverb west hyphen russia is a compound adjective or is a pronoun over is an adverb and ukraine is a dangling participle verb modified by the adverb verbs in this sense in plain simple english would not exist unless they're being modified by adverbs, and adverbs can modify either adjectives or verbs. Uh, adjectives can modify other adjectives or pronouns. And pronouns just basically represent any word in the language, or any term actually would be a better way to put it, in the language. Whether it's being modified by an adjective or whether it's standing by itself. Also, you will notice the yellow markings on here. Uh, this is where I'm pointing out the, what we call particles of negation. Words that literally mean no. When you parse them, you look them up in an etymology dictionary, and you go back to the earliest nativity root meaning, and you find out that they create a negative condition of state, either by negating the now space, or literally meaning no. Such as R-E... F-O-R, a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word. Uh, prefix P-R-O, the modifier, gerund modifier, I-N-G. Uh, anything that's modification, negating the now space, or creating a negative situation would be considered a particle of negation. Next headline comes from Reuters, and it reads, China reaffirms zero stance, city of Guangzhou on edge. The Politburo Standing Committee said China's epidemic prevention measures must not be relaxed, according to state media. So we have a series of adjectives there at the beginning, and culminating in the pronoun stance, and then a break in the continuance of the evidence with the comma, and then pronoun, adverb, verb, adverb, dangling participle verb. And again, why is it a dangling participle verb? Well, 
What is a verb, ladies and gentlemen? A verb is thinking. And if the verb is coming at the end like that, there's nothing left to think about. So it's just dangling there. And we have uh, adverb, adjective, adjective, adjective. Adjective in the past tense, said, is an adjective in the past tense. Uh, adjective, 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 adjective. Pronoun, followed by adverb not. Modifying be into adjective, relaxed, is past tense pronoun, which it would be a 4.8, which I have not marked on there. And then according would be a pronoun, adverb to in the future tense, state, adjective, and then media would be a pronoun. In any word, group, or sentence, ladies and gentlemen, uh, when it comes to an end, in uh, fiction babble, when you're syntaxing it, it, would either end on a two or a four, never a one or a three. Next headline comes from amnesty.org. Saudi Arabia, execution of two Pakistani nationals is callous attack on right to life. That's an interesting uh, wording here because they're talking about rights. Rights to life. What are rights, ladies and gentlemen? Rights are given to you by an authority. <laughs> if, of course, you consent to that authority. So if you have a right to life, well, you see where I'm going with that, hopefully. Saudi Arabia, I've been covering this in uh, multiple Now Space News programs. Uh, maybe you're not aware of Saudi Arabia, but they, do, they have had uh, the death penalty for for example, drug possession. They will behead you in public if you're caught with drugs. Even drugs that are not drugs, such as marijuana, they will cut your head off if you get caught with them in Saudi Arabia. And this has been going on for decades, and yet the past tense United States continues to contract with Saudi Arabia, basing uh, the relationship on, wait for it, Next headline comes from Fox News. Russia failed to alert U.S. of Brittany Griner transfer to penal colony. State Department says. Spokesman. White House not made aware of Griner's transfer ahead of time. Ahead of time. Okay. So one of the things, uh, one of the techniques that help to help an individual learn how to syntax through process of elimination would be to credential each term as either what I call tangible contract or non-tangible contract. Loosely speaking, a tangible contract word would be something you can certify based on a fact. For example, like Russia or fail or a department, or colony or spokesman or white or house. Those are things that we have tangible contracts with. You and I can certify those things. In the same sense, when you have a word like the, or to, T-O, or of, those things don't have the same tangibility. They're sort of just wispy concepts that don't have a tangibility to them and are not based on facts. So that's loosely how you can credential them. Uh, the way that one would certify it, like definitely certify it with the continuance of the evidence, would be to look each term up and the parts of each term in an etymology dictionary. This is known as parsing. And then you would go back to the earliest nativity root meaning that you can find of that particle or of that word. And if that term, if that meaning is tangible contract, then it's tangible contract. If it's non-tangible contract, then the word would be syntax as non-tangible contract. And when you syntax words as non-tangible contract, they would either be adverbs, verbs, or pronouns. If you syntax them as tangible contract, they would be uh, verbs, adjectives, or pronouns. A non-tangible contract word would never be an adjective, and a tangible contract word would never be an adverb. So those are some things that you can learn. I know I went through it pretty quick here, but if you study my syntax playlist, there's multiple multiple videos on there explaining this from different angles once you learn that and memorize it syntaxing begins becomes quite simple so we have adjective pronoun past tense adverb future tense 
adjective pronoun adverb adjective adjective pronoun adverb future tense adjective pronoun adjective adjective pronoun uh, I need not go through the rest and I think this is funny in the sense of uh, not funny haha but maybe in an uh, ironic sense maybe in that the past tense United States seems to have a habit of going after and arresting individuals who commit crimes that aren't in North America or I mean not in past tense United States and putting them in jail like for example El Chapo and I mean do they feel that they have to keep Mexico updated on everything that El Chapo is doing I mean it's uh it's a thing where it's like sort of uh, do as I say and not as I do sort of deal, maybe. Another headline from Fox. Virginia toddler shoots himself mother wanted for child neglect. The two-year-old shot himself with a firearm after his mother left him unattended. I'm not really going to go too much into this. You can study the syntax and see the language modification here. Uh, just to say that when I was growing up, I grew up on a farm. There were firearms in a, uh, a gun cabinet that I had access to, a key. I learned how to use firearms at an early age. I had access to the guns. I knew about gun safety. I don't ever recall reading about or hearing about children being involved in, in accidents such as this. Um... And it's just a, a sad situation, I think, a reflection on the parents, no doubt. This next uh, part right here, I just wanted to point this out to you. There's no syntax on here. You can go ahead and do it if you want to. But it's, this is more of a psychological uh, knowledge cultivation section that I want to share with the viewer. You see the title of this uh, page is Medical News Today, right? <clears throat> and it says Latest News. Now, this has to do with medicine. One could reasonably guess that this is supposed to help people, right? Every single one of these headlines has to do with a drug. Nothing has to do with, you know, a diet or exercise or, or anything like that. Anything that's actually healthy. You know, it definitely just has to do with what the title says, medical which is medicine, which in modern times through the Industrial Revolution has come to mean man-made drugs rather than, you know, herbal medicines and homeopathic uh, options. I just wanted to point that out. Next headline comes from CNN. University of Kentucky student who repeatedly hurled racist slur at black student permanently banned from campus. I wanted to point out uh, in this particular uh, grammatical scenario the particle of negation suffix ly. Ly is unique in that it literally poisons a tangible contract word into non-tangibility. It literally kills the word. I did a whole video on it. Uh, if my editing team is on the ball they will leave a link to it up here somewhere right about now so you can watch the closure on the ly i did see this video and it's a it's a very sad video it's appalling that this uh, individual would say these things especially in this day and age on the other hand, I would also say that growing up, you know, I was taught this saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. In the aftermath of this, that uh, young lady in the blue shirt there, I saw her doing some speeches uh, and, and marches, and I guess they would be considered protests. Um, and it's really, I think, I feel that society is moving in the direction that they want to turn verbal uh, someone speaking words to someone else as, as to be construed as sort of a violent attack and to hold the same weight as a physical attack. I feel that's the way it's going. At least if you
you want to look at it in terms of, he of the Hegelian dialectic uh, politically, where you have the left and the right, I feel that's the way the left is going with it. If they had their way, they, they, would, they would do that. Next headline, uh, see Zelensky's reaction when Sean Penn gives him his Academy Award. Actor and director Sean Penn honored President Volodymyr Zelensky with a surprising gesture. So, Mr. Penn gave the president of his Academy Award, which Sean Penn received for acting. So in a broader sense, ladies and gentlemen, what is that saying about Zelensky? Is he too an actor? Probably, I mean, I guess if the world, all the world's a stage, he's a much better actor than Sean, so I guess that uh, acting award is, is well merited on Zelensky's part. Um, I'm surprised he didn't get one for that music video he did years ago where he was dressed up with, uh, I think, lipstick and, and leather and chains and stuff. Sort of an S&M music video he did where he was, you know, doing the boogie-woogie. Now we move on to our weekly syntax lesson. And this one comes from CNN Business. Alex Jones ordered to pay nearly half a billion dollars to Sandy Hook families in additional damages. Now the way we the way I teach syntax to beginners is I teach you start at the end of a word group or sentence and you work backwards and the first thing that you do is you determine or credential each word's tangibility or non-tangibility as I mentioned earlier. And so I would credential damages as tangible, additional as tangible, and as non-tangible. Families, definitely tangible. Sandy Hook is the name of a place, so that would be tangible. TO is non-tangible. Dollars tangible, billion tangible. A is non-tangible. Half is tangible. How about nearly? Well, remember what I said about the LY? It poisons a word into non-tangibility, so that would be non-tangible. Pay is tangible. Two is non-tangible. Did I say pay was tangible or non-tangible? Pay is tangible. Two is non-tangible. Ordered is tangible and then Alex Jones is a name. So now that we have credentialed that, now we can do our syntaxing. But before we do that, let's look up some uh, particles of negation here. Vowel in front of a consonant, past tense, ed, this is future tense. Ly is a particle of negation. Vowel standing by itself. To, future tense. Vowel in front of a consonant there, vowel in front of a consonant there. Now we can syntax. Going backwards, damages would be a pronoun being colored by tangible contract adjective additional, which is modified by adverb in. Now we have tangible contract families, which is a pronoun being colored by hook, also being colored by adjective uh, sandy. And then two is non-tangible contract adverb in the future tense, so we have Two syntax scenarios here are 134 and 134, i.e. 1334, 134. Now we have dollars, which is tangible contract. Now we have dollars, which is tangible contract. Pronoun, billion, is tangible contract. Adjective, A is non-tangible contract. Adverb, half is... Tangible contract pronoun. Oh, no, it's not. Half is tangible contract verb. Nearly is non tangible contract adverb. Pay is tangible contract verb. Two is non tangible contract adverb in the future tense. Ordered is a pronoun in the past tense being colored by Jones, which is tangible contract adjective, and an Alex, which is tangible contract adjective. Let's move on to the lighthearted section of the program, the memes of the week. Uh, this one's pretty funny to any teachers out there, especially uh, 
you know, middle school, high school teachers. This one's for the martial arts, combat, sports, uh, mixed martial arts fans out there. Um, it's pretty funny stuff, especially if you've watched the early uh, Pride Fighting Championship uh, pay-per-views in some of the UFC events. Uh, you would see things like this, especially from you know legends like Hoist Gracie. And the last one, which let me move my picture here so you can see what Mel's got in his hand there. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I do believe this is from Mel's Lethal Weapon days, which that was a great, um, great movie, by the way. Well, in my opinion, anyways, especially the fight with him and Gary Busey at the end of the movie, where I think I think it's Mel that gets Gary in an arm bar or maybe even a triangle, I think. But it was one of the first times that I've seen uh, jiu-jitsu actually performed in a movie. Because usually the, the martial arts movies up to that point were all, you know, fake, like sort of Bruce Lee, uh, flashy, flamboyant stuff, or the Steven Seagal, uh, goofy Aikido stuff. But uh, this had some real, real meat to it, like realism to it with the jujitsu. Now let's move on to the cognitive conjecture portion of the show. Uh, I did a post on this in my community section, but I, I would like to reiterate on that. If you look down here at the title of this video, we have the same mistake that he makes and everyone that uh, follows him and worships him makes in that they put the colon and in a space and in the fact which is not correct because each correct sentence structure must start with a cause and when you represent that with a colon the first letter of the fact of the first fact would have to be tied up against the colon there would be no space because when it's tied up against the colon then it maintains the mathematical interface but when it's like this it breaks the mathematical interface because then that means that the sentence is beginning with of the or ending with of the or with the and then of course we have the ing modifier here in the fact the particle of negation but what else do we have here you can say that this is a position lodial fact well where's the positional for the spell i see what could be considered a lodial with the but where's the positional that's supposed to be in between here? If it's supposed to be correct sentence structure. It's almost like uh, that guy isn't even trying anymore. He's just putting it right in your face. He doesn't care about correctness. Speaking of which, uh, let's listen to this part that I picked out for this part of this uh, program. About freedom or about love, happiness, neutrality. We want free venture capitalism, right? This, this is a wonderful concept. This is what the foundation of who we are as a people was made, right? And so as they've denigrated our moral values, as they... That's a foundation of how we, as a people, were made? Is that before the First Nations Native American genocide or after? They've blurred our borders, as they've created all these scenarios to create a war against us, it's really valuable to stay focused right now and stay committed to our, our moral values of correctness, of being honest with ourselves. And, and I, I encourage everybody, do the correct thing when no one's looking. Because when you do that, that changes the paradigm around the consequences and the things that happen around you. So when no one's looking, and you have the choice to be a leader, or you have a choice to, you know, convey money for the people, or do the correct thing for the people, because it, people want a righteous leader. People want that. I know I certainly, I'll, I'll raise my hand and I'll get behind someone that has a, a, a righteous value to them, someone that actually cares and that can actually do something. And, you know, what I did, you know, people throw a lot of stones at me. Don't judge me. Take a look at the works. Which, you know what? That's exactly what I do. I take a look at his works. And here's one of them right here. And it is 
not correct and completely adverb verb adjective pronoun fiction bible example of a fictitious conveyance of grammar and um there's no stones being thrown it's just either being correct or being not correct and as far as you know doing the right thing or doing the correct thing when no one's looking i highly recommend that that guy take his own advice or maybe begin taking his own advice um, rather than continuing to throw stones at others for absolutely no reason with no evidence um, and that's you know what i try to what i try to convey to other people is to you know concentrate on the grammar learn the grammar because that's the most important thing once you have that base of grammar then you can move on to other things and then you don't have to think about a guy like that or me or anyone else you can just do it yourself you don't need a leader because if you're autonomous why would you need a leader you would be your own leader That about wraps it up for this week's edition of For the Now Space News. Thank you for joining me. Stay tuned. Next week, I'm going to implement another section where I'm going to try and bring in some culture to the program where I will begin sharing each week one piece of music or literature, reading, not necessarily having to do with uh, correct sentence structure, or but it might you know but uh but more to do with culture you know things that that i or my wife read or are interested in and i'll share them here on this channel once a week for you maybe if you're interested in uh, to go out and check out just also because i like to support independent artists musicians and authors uh, that i respect and uh, also, I would like to give a shout out to my beautiful wife of eight years. We just had our eight year anniversary yesterday. Um, I love you and uh, thank you for the blessings that you've brought into my life and, and the life that we have. Thank you. And thank you viewers for watching. If you'd like to learn the grammar, Contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation where you can ask me any questions you want to ask. And I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you really are motivated to learn. You can also hit the join button uh, below this video and sign up for the memberships here. There are two tiers. More information on that when you click the button. And if none of those things appeal to you, you can always just catch the freebies over 400 grammar videos on this channel five years worth of blood sweat and tears of me editing shooting and publishing my gift to my fellow mankind thank you for watching and i'll see you next week